welcome to the Seafood Capital of Australia. I'm Jamie Crawford. The Captain boys have come to visit again, which is cool, uh, but they've laid down the challenge and said, how many species can we catch in 48 hours? So we're going to be fishing in the bay, we're going to be fishing offshore, we're going to be hitting the beaches, just to try and tick as many species off the list as we can. So join us and let's go. Um, yeah, so we were watching the weather pretty intently. Earlier in the week we had 20 to 30 knots and some sideways rain and it was looking a bit average, but yeah, we got a nice little window of weather. You've timed it exceptionally well. We thought we'd do a run out to some reefs to try and get some red snapper, so we did that uh, this morning. Found some nice, nice red snapper, which are our, we call them, nana guide. We've just sounded around in, in about 25, 26 metres of water. We're just looking for a bit of hard bottom. There's some little lumps that come up through this area and they hold some nice red snapper. They'll sit normally just a, a couple of metres above the bottom and there'll be a little ball of fish. Um, uh, that's what we're hoping to find. We're just gonna drop a couple baits down to the reef um, for some nanagai, our red snapper. Yeah, so we're using squid heads. They stay on the bait really well. Um, and we've got a pilchard on the bottom. Um, uh, nice flavor in the pilchard. We, uh, yeah, we're using some 6.0 straight shank chem sharp hooks. And we've got a luminous light sleeve just over the top. That gives it a bit of protection. Um, and we have crimped most of these. It just makes them, yeah, sit nice and, nice and flush, nice and neat and doesn't spin too much. So we'll drop a bait to the bottom. So I'm using a uh, little Torium 16 and an Anthem um, saltwater series rod. Um, but any outfit um, that you can fish, 30 to 40 pound braid is perfect for this style of fishing. I suppose when you're used to the, the smaller East Coast nannies and then we pull up our um, solid 50, 55 centimetre Red snapper, they're, uh, yeah, they look like a big goldfish. Big eyes on them and um, big bucket mouths. And then we thought we'd chase some whiting, which panned out pretty well. We've just pulled up to fish this little uh, whiting spot. So we've pulled up in about 18 or so metres of water, which is reasonably deep for whiting, but we do get some better sized fish in the deeper water. So today I'm using a Rack Raider, two to five kilo, a little Stratic 2500 and 10 pound braid. So when chasing whiting, anything that's nice and light, um, and is quite sensitive is, is ideal for whiting. They can bite very, um, very subtly. Um, so having a rod um, and the outfit that's sensitive enough to feel those little bites is pretty important. And we're just using a Paternoster style rig today, um, two hooks, um, uh, and we're using a bit of a mixture of pippies um, and also some green prawns. Well, only a few minutes ago, we are just off that headland catching a few nice red snapper. Um, and just to mix it up a bit, we've come in a bit closer um, and found some nice whiting in shore. Um, so that's a good thing about our area. The diversity um, is pretty cool. So we can be catching some deeper water fish and then we've got our bay systems as well. So whiting is always a welcome addition to the boat. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll keep looking around and um, uh, see what other diversity, see what other species we can find today. And then tomorrow we'll try and have a squid fish first thing in the morning before the wind kicks up and then the wind's gonna blow a bit from the north, um, which makes fishing in the bay a little bit tricky, but it's perfect for hitting the beaches. So we'll grab the longer rods, uh, we'll shoot down into the national park and flick some metal off the sand and see if we can find some salmon. We've come along to these um, uh, patch of, there's a bit of reef and a bit of weed dotted along here. We call this the North Shore here in Port Lincoln. That's a good squid ground. Um, so we're fishing at about three metres of water um, uh, and just drifting and casting along as we go. Uh, so the gear we're using today, we've got the Cephia BB eight foot six squidding rod. Um, yeah, nice crisp parabolic action rod, great for casting, great for working the jig. We're using the new uh, Flash Boost Rattle jigs as well. So I've grabbed a 3.0. I do like the bigger jigs. Just helps you to get down that little bit deeper. Squid are quite often hugging the bottom. Um, so to get a jig down nice and deep is, um, yeah, is pretty important. There we go. Second cast, first drift. Um, uh, yeah, nice little calamari to start the day. Um, that's on the brighter coloured flash boost rattle. Not a bad start. All right, so we've come out to the Port Lincoln National Park. Um, down on the south coast, we've got a, an area called Sleaford Bay. So we've come into the Warner end and we've full drived our way through the park um, over plenty of dunes and little rocky tracks. Just rocked up here and we've got four schools of salmon around us at the moment. 
awesome coastline. Um, uh, conditions are pretty good, so let's get into some salmon action. All right, there's a school, it's just starting to move into range now. Yeah, a bit of chaos. We we're watching a big patch in front of this headland. We've just been hanging up on top of the cliff watching them and they eventually moved within casting range, so it was on. We run down the beach before they moved out again and first cast, we uh, nailed this one. Nice little test for the new T-Curve Surf Series. This is the six to 10 kilo. Um, yeah, happy days. just the challenge of, of the different species. Um, but yeah, it's good to have those species that really does push you as well. Quite proud of my range of Shimano gear these days. Um, yeah, I love, yeah, love, love the range of gear that they offer. Lightweight, responsive, there's some really good lure fishing rods, good jigging rods, um, you know, right through to popper rods and, and surf rods as well. Um, so they're offering that full range now. With reels, just um, super smooth reels, have hardly had any issues, um, can't even remember ever having to send a reel back. Yeah, they're just a well-sealed, um, well-run reel. Quality components to go with them as well. Yeah, started with my dad when I was a young age, so he was always a keen fisherman and still is. Um, so he used to take me when I was pretty young and yeah, the bug developed from there. We used to fish uh, off the Adelaide Metro coast, but down Victor Harbour and um, down the Coorong a fair bit. Um, we used to do a lot of freshwater fishing as well in the hills. He, I suppose he instilled that bug in me early on and uh, yeah, went from there. Um, when I started working in the hatchery, so after I finished studying, um, I started working in a, um, a snapper and kingfish hatchery. Yeah, working with the fish and just seeing their feeding habits and how um, the barometer and um, even the, the environmental conditions can, can trigger a different, uh, different bite. Um, so some days we'd go to feed the mulloway in the pond and they'd be shut down. So you know it's uh, a good day to avoid hitting the beaches. Um, but on other days you'd go to feed them and they'd be super aggressive and um, yeah, you can only link it back to that um, lunar cycle or um, barometric pressure. But yeah, it's just really interesting seeing when they would feed and when they wouldn't. Um, so the first boat, it was actually my dad's um, little 15 foot Savage Tasman. And then uh, I kind of borrowed it from dad for several years when I moved over to the peninsula and kept it in Lincoln. Um, and then yeah, eventually gave that back to him and um, upgraded and bought a Formosa 5.8, um, which is the boat I've got now. So I've had that for um, a bit over 10 years. So far it's been a very versatile boat and ticks a lot of boxes. On the back, got a 140 Suzuki. Um, yeah, I found the, uh, found the Suzy to be uh, really economical for the runs we do. Last year, put a Simrad Evo 3S in the 16 inch. The, for the type of fishing we do, that bottom reading, the resolution, um, yeah, it, it's amazing. So on the back, I run a transom mount, um, a, a TM185 medium. It's got a fairly narrow cone, but it's good for prospecting um, uh, what's on the reefs um, rather than scouting a bigger area. Um, and then got a, uh, um, just a two-in-one structure scan on the back as well. Um, uh, I love the anticipation. I love the, uh, the surprises you see along the way and uh, probably the reward at the end of the day. Put in some hard work and uh, um, scratch up a feed and it is pretty rewarding at the end of the day to, to sit down, cook a feed of fresh fish and enjoy it with the family. Um, but yeah, I really like traveling with fishing as well. I think that's the beauty of um, of fishing, it encourages you to visit different areas that you wouldn't normally go to, um, just to target different species and the people you meet along the way. Um, yeah, it's all part of that journey, but quite a few memorable fish that, uh, yeah, I can look back fondly. And the most memorable out of any, um, probably a big white sturgeon out of the Fraser River in Canada, British Columbia. That was pretty specky. As a freshwater fish, just the, the backdrop of where we were and, and yeah, you know, the seven, eight foot sturgeon and, and having a freshwater fish of that size jump and, uh, but yeah, it's just something totally different, very different to anything we've got in Oz. In visiting other areas, I suppose, when you come back, it helps you to appreciate what's on your doorstep as well. Um, uh, we love, yeah, we love this coastline. We love that it's not super crowded and not super busy. And yeah, we can still come for a drive out to the National Park. We can still find a beach to ourselves and walk along the beach and do some fishing. And um, yeah, the solitude is, is pretty cool.